So hello everybody, I am Theo. On the other side of the stage is my friend Ekiko, and together we are going to do the transitional presentation about the open source infrastructure. So pretty much we are going to talk about computers today. Let's see some computers in action that we have in the server room. These are all of the machines that host various open source services in Nuremberg. Uh, including OBS, and this last one is in Provo. So these are the machines that are running the open source services, and this is how it looks like when the machines are not running the services, and we have a downtime. You see this little cute guy there, and it instructs you to go get a coffee. This doesn't happen often for us, though, because our machines have a 100% uptime, and our monitoring is broken. We have around, uh, let's say, 15 virtual machines. Three of them are in Provo. One is outside of SUSE. It's at the sponsor's data center. We have around 150 virtual machines, around eight switches in eight VLANs, many big workers for various services, for OBS, for OpenQA, for Jenkins, serial console servers, KVM servers, and quite a lot of terabyte of fiber storage. The thing is that in the past years, there were absolute numbers about those machines, but honestly, I didn't count the numbers this year. I don't find it important anymore because things are changing, and our team is trying to catch up the trend, and we are moving to DevOps philosophies. So it's not really important how many virtual machines are running today, because tomorrow the number may be double. So, now that we saw the machines, we can see who are those people that are operating those machines, the OpenSUSE Heroes team. And this is a picture from our off-site meeting that happened in Nuremberg on December, right before Christmas. So we had three days of productive discussions and quite of uh, hands-on trainings. And this is from the dinner that we had that day. It's a bit hard to actually separate the teams per service or per cluster of infrastructure. The reason is that there are many services that are, for example, handled by SUS employees, some that are handled by SUS employees that are, they are actually volunteering their free time for this. So it's not really easy to separate the teams as a, like, a sample separation, what we can say, what you can find is in those wiki pages, you can find the OpenSUSE Heroes wiki page where it lists some members. The, there is also the Big Dops and Big Solutions teams that you can find their wiki page there, some members of, them, of, the, of that team as well. They are mostly handling OBS, Software Open Source Org and other services around OBS. Of course, there is the SUSE IT team and the MicroFocus IT team that uh, they are also running a lot of open source services or they are vendors for some services that open source is a consumer. There is the open source, the open QA infrastructure that is run mostly by some of the open source release managers, uh, some QA teams inside SUSE. And of course, there are various other contributors that are administering services. And again, even if they are in SUSE, they might be volunteers when they are actually administering this service. So I'm going to throw out some names now, but those names are mostly... So then those names are mostly sample names, and uh, there, are, there might be more people that are doing our work here. So we have Christian and Sarah, they are from community, they are doing, oh, sorry, spoiler alert. Christian and Sarah, they are doing the wiki. Lars is doing everything. <laughs> Torsten is this guy there. Hello, bro. <laughs> we have Marcus that is joining Lars and doing everything. Uh, per from community also, he's doing our mailing list administration. 
We have Daniel, who works from community. Max from society, mostly helping with some po polit political issues, let's say. So we were able to get access to machines that were restricted before because Max did all the paperwork. We have Nils, he's helping mostly with the short infrastructure that we have. Adrian and Henne helping with the build service. Richard is also here. He couldn't be missing from our team. Dominic handling also OpenQA and various other stuff. And usually he's coming to me to fix stuff for him, so I just give him access to let me let me alone. Ludwig is uh, helping also with the OpenQA. And Stefan Kulo as well. And with OBS and stuff like this. Christian Mueller is my boss also doing everything. Martin from the Prague office, he was doing uh, mirrors mostly, but uh, now he's helping with mirrors and other stuff. Stanislav is doing the web rate. Daniel is doing Jenkins. Anchor is our Rails expert. Whenever we have a Rails issue, Anchor is the guy to go. Rudy from Society, from Formula Society and now from the Big Tops team, he's doing big service mostly and various other stuff. Mikai from uh, from Provo, he's our microfocus IT contact for OpenSUSE. And Michal, that is doing Connect. And what else are you doing, Michal? Only Connect. So these are some names. I hope I didn't forget anybody. I'm pretty sure that I forgot somebody. All of those people that you saw, they have access to our configuration management system. They have uh, partial access to our monitoring. So if your name is not here, please fix it. And uh, me, of course. I am from the society. I'm Theo. I'm from Greece initially, but I live in Prague the past five and a half years. In um, most of my work time and some of my free time, I'm working on uh, moving services mostly from in, inside SUS uh, infrastructure to the Heroes infrastructure. And I think I'm doing a terrible job on this. So let's see what is inside those services, uh, the, inside those boxes. We saw the people, we saw the machines. Let's dip inside. Let's open those machines and see the services that are running inside there. First, I'm going to give you a few services that we use for administrative purposes. First is our GitLab instance. For those who don't know what is GitLab, it's a clone of GitHub that you can set up in your private infrastructure. So you can keep your code private. Git, we are, uh, it also offers its own CI protocol, CI application better. And in GitLab right now, we have a lot of semi-private information, semi-private data, and most importantly, we have our salt stack repository. About the salt stack repository, I would like to say a few words. It started for like, we started with it like a year ago with salt before we were using another configuration management system. So salt is the system that it's actually a, po a key point for me because if the machine is not in salt stack, it's not official. It shouldn't be monitored, it should go away. So pretty much every new developer or every, every new administrator, every new service that we want to have, we try to put it inside source stack so that the service can be properly documented and we can deploy it easily in the next, in the next round that we want to do it. We are using Isinga for monitoring. Right now, monitoring for OpenSUSE is still provided by the SUSE IT team for the open source services, I mean, which is something that we are heavily working on in order to separate the monitoring from uh, the source machines and the open source ones. Still, the open source heroes have full access to every single notification that uh, we are getting from the open source machines. We are using FreePA. How many of you know FreePA? Good. Not many, I was expecting it. I didn't know about it either, and I felt ashamed of myself, actually. It's a very nice solution. It can do a lot of stuff. What we are using it mostly is about LDAP authentication as a single sign-on. So the GitLab accounts are through the free IPA. And 
we are using it also to manage the name servers. The, the, yeah, the name servers, both the public and the private ones. So the OpenSUSE.org zone plus the internal infra OpenSUSE.org zone, they are both right now handled by FreePA. FreePA also offers a very nice web interface, a very nice command line client. We are using both and it's fully scalable and fully automatable. And it's a really an application that moved for, uh, made us move forward quite a lot, especially on the name server issue that uh, we were facing a lot of trouble before. As a project management tool, we are using Redmine. Redmine is not used only by our team, it's used by many other teams in, for OpenSUSE. The instance that we are running, it's Progress OpenSUSE org. Many of you might have noticed it. They are, it offers also a ticketing system, so it offers also our ticketing system. Whenever you send a mail to admin OpenSUSE org, the ticket ends up in Redmine. By default, the tickets are private for security reasons because people might put sensitive information inside there, like their IPs, their names, their addresses, or their passwords in clear text. Please don't do that. But we have made quite some progress on the ticket wrangling area. As an example, two days ago, we had an offsite here during the conference, and Christian Boltz here showed us a very nice graph where we had around 500 tickets until January, and we managed to wrangle, to wrangle all of them, to categorize them properly, to assign them to proper administrators, and we closed around 400 of them. Some of them were really long-standing tickets for like two, three years in the queue. One was four years, actually. And we are pretty fast now into actually ranking the tickets, make them private or public, or at least giving some feedback to the users. And yeah, sorry. Before, before I speak about Bwik, uh, in Redmine, we also host our internal wiki documentation, so we have two types of documentation, let's say we have the public documentation, it's under our wiki page in an open source org, but in Redmine we have also a private wiki where we put information that are semi-private, let's say, or like more sensitive information, and they are dedicated to our team only, like internal information for the team, for administrators only. And as a last application, I have to mention PWIC that we are using for getting analytics about the various open, open source websites. So, I'm going now to mention a few services based on who is actually maintaining it. First, the services that the open source heroes offer. As, a, as I mentioned already, the, the open source heroes have a lot of services that they, we inherited from SUSE recently. So you may see stuff here that you may not expect because they might seem sensitive or not. Also, the Open SUSE Heroes team, apart from maintaining services, it manages all of the systems into open, open operating system level, let's say, through SALT. So we take care of the updates of the systems daily through a cron job. We, care, we take care if the base repositories or the base, some base common networking packages, some base common text editors, some base common useful everyday packages are installed in the machines after the initial deployment. So whoever is the actual administrator or developer of one service, our team might also touch through our automation to the system and perform some updates there and stuff. There are also, an, uh, as you saw previously from the names that I mentioned, there are also a number of other people that are developers of some services and they are also administering the service or semi-administering the service, like Anchor there that is doing the software open source org or the or same guys that are doing the events open source org webpage. And there might be, for some public services, there might be some separate admins with restricted pseudo access to some services that we have. Like for example, we have for the Jenkins service. So, some services that we offer is FreeIPA that I mentioned already, the NTP servers for all of the open source infrastructure, the CI, Gen the Jenkins CI application, the public key server. How many of you have seen our public key server? How many of you liked it? 
Why is there one hand US? <laughs> <laughs> the web gate that is used for the translations of our beloved operating system. How many of you are comp contributing to web gate? What's wrong with the others? You don't speak a second language? <laughs> Uh, paste pin is, ah, oh, Michael, your service, I remembered, uh, that we can uh, paste there our uh, passwords. Uh, we have, uh, we offer the mailing list administration, uh, the software open source org ser uh, packaging indexing service, the social website that we have for the membership, for the memberships and for the elections that is not working very well recently. The events open source org, the OSM application, Planet, the P week that I mentioned before, the countdown of uh, the next open source conference or of the next distribution, the travel support program, and of course, the status page. How many of you have seen the status page? That's good or not? <laughs> Why so many people check our status page? <laughs> so the status page, I would like to mention it a bit for the two people that haven't seen it in this room. Uh, the status page is a semi-automated static page that we have right now that offers the status of pretty much all of the services. So if a service is not in the status page, it doesn't exist, we don't support it. If you think that it should, send us a ticket, please. And also, consider volunteering for administering the service. So the status page is semi-automated, as I said, because in our plan, when we will have our monitoring uh, fully ready for the open source infrastructure, it will be also able to get some notifications from the, our monitoring system and display the status of the web page. But we can also put we can also define the status of some services inside the status page, which means that we can also write a more human readable text or a small post-mortem after the service is going uh, up again that uh, fully explains what is happening uh, or, or what happened actually with this specific service or services. We also, of course, uh, keep, uh, keep uh, track of uh, those uh, things in, uh, into our uh, blog, which is tracked in Planet Open Source Org, and it's under our Progress Open Source Org project. But for very important issues, we usually use the news open source org webpage where it gets the most clicks from the people. So these are the services that uh, the open source heroes offer. And uh, there are a lot of services that the IT offers. And I'm not mentioning a, 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 every one of them. I will mention just a few, just some highlights. <clears throat> so first of all, society offers and maintains the network equipment, the hypervisors, and the storage. So whatever is physical, it's maintained by the society. This is not going to change in the near future, and I'm not sure if it's ever going to change, which means that in this case, the open source infrastructure is acting like a customer, like a, like a customer of these services and societies the vendor. So this is a very nice thing that happened that we managed to put a clear line with this and say what is actually in the community and what is not. Other things that the society offers are the backup servers and log hosts. The reason that the, the backup server is still in society and the log host is that there is a mix between some services that I'm mentioning later. So we need to, we plan to distinguish the services, but we need first to distinguish which ones are going where. So monitoring that I mentioned before. The database clusters are also managed by society, mostly by Darix. Open build service, as I mentioned before, is handled by teams inside SUSE, OpenQA as well, and the features management system, Fate Open Org, is also by society. There are, these are some highlights from some services that are in the, in our list and are to do to move from the SUSE management or the microfocus IT management to the full community management. First is the mirror administration. 
the mirror brain application. The problem that this service is still inside SUSE is that there is a machine, a specific machine, scanner open SUSORG, that performs some checks. When we have a new mirror request, it performs some checks to, se to see if the candidate mirror is actually tracking good our content. This machine is still inside SUSE infrastructure, and there, is a, there would be a lot of communication issue between us and the all of the mirrors in order to change their firewalls and their IPs for the new scanner machine. So there will be some transition period. So it's not a technical issue, it's more of a political issue, let's say, that it's in progress. The rest of the services, the main web page, the various wikis, and open source org, the open source org and stuff, the news, the forums, and the lizards are all services that are on mainly by Microfocus IT, and quite recently some of uh, the society people also got access. They are run in Provo, in the old open source database, in the old open source virtualization cluster. So these are actually into, into high priority to be moved to our administration, and they might even change location, but this is still not defined yet. So these are pretty much the highlights of the services. And now I'm going to mention some of the highlights of our team that happened in the last year. The last year was a very important year for us, especially the last Open Source Conference was a very important event for our team because actually it is where our team were, was created. We were renamed, we were rebranded from the Open SUSE Services team or the SUSE whatever admin infra team. We have a distinct name, we have a distinct web page where we can find us. So the rebranding to Heroes happened back then. Since then, we got, of course, better publicity since we announced the team into the community and inside SUSE, we got much better publicity through the news page, through the status Open SUSE org web page and speaking about publicity. Since this happened, there has been a burst of new community uh, members joining our team and willing to administer services. This proved actually that there, although the procedures didn't change, this proved that the people just really needed this rename and they really needed to understand what is different and they really needed to know exact steps on how to join this team. So this was successfully achieved and we got many new members from the community and many new members from SUSE that are voluntarily doing administration stuff outside of their work time. Our team, since it had distinct members and all of that, so it was time to meet. After the, open, after the last Open SUSE conference, we met twice. Once was in December in Nuremberg for three very productive days. There are full reports about this in the news open source web webpage. And of course, we had another off-site meeting the first day of this conference. Another thing that changed is the packaging policy that this team had before. The operating system that was being used was a mix, and the packages that were the additional packages that we needed that were not in the operating system yet were inside a SUSE internal. OBS repository. So this changed. We have a public OBS repository now under Build Service OpenSUSE Org. It's named OpenSUSE Infrastructure. There you can see various packages that are used in our services. And based on the packages, you can pretty much understand what, with what our services are running, with which, pack, with which applications are equivalent services are running. We also created our own GOS image for initial deployments of the applications. It's also under a sub-project of the open source infrastructure, and it's always running the latest lib version. This GOS package is a very minimal, uh, sorry, this GOS image is very minimal. It's used only for initial deployment, and after the initial deployment, Salt takes over of the machine and installs the rest of the information that it needs. Another very important achievement that we had was to take over the DNS finally. After many years, the DNS as 
information to you. It was not handled by SUSE, it was handled by Microfocus IT. So whenever we needed a new domain, a new domain name, the procedure could take up to two or three days, which was mostly fine for external services, but for internal purposes, it was quite uh, of a delay of our work. So this is now fully taken by our team in FreeIPA. And since then, we had ma made also a major cleanup of the DNS services, especially in the internal, in the internal domain. Of course, there is the separation of the services between what is in Heroes, what is in SUSE, what is in Microfocus IT. This may seem simple, but actually it was a very big topic for quite a few years. For the past four years that I am actually contributing to this team, we didn't even know if this should be touched by the community or not. So now we have clear separation of this. We have different salt masters for this. So we actually, we di and in the future we have different more services, like different monitoring. So we actually know now what the community is allowed to touch and what is not. There have been lots of services moved to Heroes. Salt helped us a lot there to clean up some old standing services, some old standing operating systems and stuff like this. But there is still a lot of work there because we actually inherited a lot of services from SUSE. And another important information is that we are having monthly meetings. It's happening every first Sunday of the month at 6 o'clock UTC, which means 7 o'clock winter time and 8 o'clock summer time. You are all welcome to join us. It's happening on Freenode on the OpenSUSE admin channel. The, the topics are uh, published before the meeting into our, in, in a ticket into our progress OpenSUSE or OpenSUSE admin project. So you can actually contribute topics if you want to our team. The ticket ranking is something that I already mentioned. The monitoring as well. Documentation is a, a very happy topic, I can say. Uh, we have seen as well a burst of documentation after this reporting happened the last year. I, the main reason I, su I suppose is that many of the long-standing admins inside SUSE knew everything in their mind, but when new people join, joined in, there was the need to document more and more simple procedures. So we are having actually a very good documentation, both internally and externally, and it's still, it's always a work in progress. It's an ongoing work in progress and it's never going to end. It's never going to get better. The GitLab, as I mentioned, is something that we are also proud of. It allowed us to add new, many new people and to actually have semi access to the infrastructure, especially through our configuration management system, SOLT. So, Questions, I'm not going to receive yet. I'm going to answer first some frequently asked questions that I get from various people. So, Craig, you can sit down. <laughs> Sorry. So, I have another 15 minutes. You have some time to sit. <laughs> so, first question that we quite often get is, what is your operating system? As I said, we inherited a lot of services from SUSE, so there is still a mix of SUSE Enterprise and OpenSUSE. But we have a policy, if it is not OpenSUSE, fix it. We are running the latest leap in our GOS image, and pretty much in all of our infrastructure, we are running the latest leap, apart from the cases that the service is old and it's running some old SUSE Enterprise uh, version or, SUSE, or the latest SUSE Enterprise version. We also have the OpenSUSE infrastructure repository as add-on repository when the packages are not in, uh, in the operating system, but we also have a policy here that the package should go to OpenSUSE infrastructure, then to factory, and then to the next leap so we can remove it from the third-party repository. Our third party repository is also fully monitored by our security team. So we get also notifications if something is outdated. We have the GOS image that I already mentioned, and we have the magic salt command that runs in every machine and updates our machines to the latest version always. Next question that, I, that we quite often receive is how many people are in the team? And the answer is, I don't know. 
We are many and we are not enough. And please join us. And the second, the, the next question that I get is if somebody can join or can help the team. And the answer is, of course, sorry. We do not accept contributions. We are some shady underground team. And you need to do quite some sacrifices to join our team. So let's rephrase the question to something more useful. How can I join the team? How can I help? Our communication media are mainly IRC. You can join us in OpenSUSE Admin in the Heroes mailing list. You can, of course, look at our tickets. They are always there waiting for your attention. We have the configuration management system that you can ask for read-only access. We are waiting for your contributions if you want to start a service or if you want to take over a running service through SOLT, of course. And we are going to give you read access to our configuration management system. We are going to give you access to our documentation, but we are not going to give you access to any machines. This is something that you have to do it by yourselves. You need as your absolute latest challenge. You need to send us your merge request that gives you root access to all of the machines. If you can do this, this can prove to me that you know Git, you know Salt, and you are ready to know more. And finally, we need somebody that knows Rails to finish Mirror Pinky. Lars is saying about this thing every year, and every year we are missing our contributor. Mirror Pinky is our is a Rails application, and it's intended to be our self-host, self-management mirror solution. So the mirror admins can manage their data by themselves. So if they change their IP or if they change their bandwidth levels, they do not have to send us a ticket every time to update information in our database. So we really need, we really, really please need somebody to come and help us with mirror pinky. And above all, we need you to be creative. We need you not to be afraid because there is plenty of work there and it's never ending. And the last question that we get from people is, what about privacy? The funny thing here is if we can read your mails. So people are asking about privacy, if we protect the data, if we respect your data. So the answer to the question if we can read your mails is yes. If you want also to do the same, join us. So, as last thing, I would like to say a few of our future plans. Before I say this, I would, I would like to say that in order to prepare for this presentation, I watched all the previous presentations that are happening every year about the open source administration, the open source infrastructure, and all of those topics. And I noticed that quite of a bunch of the stuff that I said today, they are actually future plans of the last years. The ticketing system, the separation of the services, configuration management, monitoring, all of that stuff are actually mentioned in previous presentations, which means that their team is progressing, and this I'm really proud of being part of this. So for our for now, future plans, we have quite a few challenges actually to solve. First of all, is that we have already prepared a new virtualization cluster in Provo. The new cluster is following the pattern of the Nuremberg cluster right now, which means that virtualization servers, networking, and everything from society, everything else from the open source heroes. We have the cluster ready. It's running. It's running even some services inside there, some uh, the slave name server, uh, slave LDAP server, slave salt master. But we are still waiting for the external internet line then it will be fully ready. This will double our infrastructure immediately. We are really looking forward for it. It was quite some of an effort to get it ready. We need, of course, to take over more services from SUSE. Now with the new Provo cluster, we need, first of all, to move all of the old SUSE services to the new cluster. We need to separate the monitoring and plenty of other services that I mentioned already before. Another big plan is that we are going to try a CDN, provi a CDN provider that 
we got an offer from a sponsor. This will be first used as a replacement for static open source org, and if it matches our needs, we may we may try it also for mirroring purposes in the future. But this is quite some far future. Uh, we have created an internal zone in for open source org. Just as your information, the previous internal zone was also called opensource.org, which meant that we were getting mixed results when we were running host service inside the infrastructure and f public from the internet, which led into quite some confusion. So this is now solved, but it's not fully solved in all of the infrastructure. So we have this internal zone, and on, on f in front of this zone, we are going to put an open VPN server so that we get more protection for admin-only services, like GitLab, which is now on the internet. We need more support from the community on SALT, especially on formulas. Our team is a very heavy usage of formulas. I've, I've been giving in pretty much every open source conference apart from these talks about configuration management, so you will see my idea. We really need to have a redistributable code, and we really need to use redistributable code, so we are actually using formulas from github.com salt stack formulas organization. Most of them do not have SUSE or OpenSUSE support, unfortunately. So I am the guy usually that brings this support to those formulas, but it's like 70% of the work to set up a service. So we really need your help here. So everybody who knows Salt or would like to know Salt, this is a very good starting point without even having any access to our infrastructure. As a also far future issue is that me and Martin, we are going to set up an open source cluster in the Prague office. It, it will be much smaller than the Nuremberg and the Provo ones. And it will take some time because mostly of political reasons, but it will be our baby. Another thing that we want to do, it's mostly Lars' idea, is that we need to set up more services to the public under the open source domain. So the key server that we actually uh, set up to the, the public is a service that can be used by anyone, not only by open source users. So we need to, we want to do the same for more publicity for our distribution mostly, for more services. And the initial idea that we had was to put NTP, ser NTP servers under an open source domain to the public pool. If you have any more ideas, we are open and you are willing to help us, of course. But we can accept new tickets or new ideas here in person or the best new code for your next new cool service. So this is pretty much all I wanted to say. Last thing I want to remind you is this is Admin Appreciation Day. Uh, give us a hug, give us a beer. We are 24 seven awake and even when the machines are not there working. And remember, you pay us to, to sleep. If, you, if we run, you need to run as well. Any questions? Craig? You already answered my question with your canned set of questions. But the question was essentially, for those people who are watching this presentation who don't have superpowers, how, how might people be involved? And you largely answered that. A lot of the things that you had listed there, though, were still things that require superpowers. And I'm just, to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still wondering a little bit if there are mere mortals that uh, can do things that would be meaningful to help with, uh, with the heroes team. So there are things that require superpowers, but there are things that will require much, much minimal powers which are we, we are willing to give to the people. So we can give people read access to our documentation or to some services, but we will not give full access until we, the user passes some, let's say, probation period. So we can fully trust him. Or the user sends us the pull request to get himself access to this service. But there are still, I disagree with you, there are still a lot of things that you can do in order to help the infrastructure without much access. You can, as 
first example you can help us with the solved formulas. This is a topic that I'm spending most of my time actually. So when something is not broken, I'm writing formulas code mostly. So if somebody wants to help me, this requires absolutely zero power. And it's a really powerful thing because when this will be ready, we will deploy it in 3,000 servers, let's say. Does this answer the question? Thanks. Christian wants to say something about yeah, the wiki. So Tell us. Exactly. I have an announcement to make. So you probably heard about we have to update the wiki for quite a while. And you heard about the spam attack last year. So now I have some news for you. Point your browser to en.test.opensource.org and you will see what is our future wiki. So it's not only a new version of MediaWiki, of course, but we also have some new features. For example, everybody complained about search. I think we were able to fix that. Then something like people complained, oh, why was the documentation moved from the wiki to GitHub? Yeah, it depends who manages it, but the point is, now you can simply include the document from GitHub. So don't worry where it is, just use it. The, another technical change is that we now use OpenID for, for login, but don't worry, it's still your OpenSUSE account. Then we brought back the boilerplates for separate namespaces, which was lost some years ago. So when you create a new page, you have the template that match that namespace. Yeah, and some more, but read it yourself on the test wiki, because if I would mention everything, then you would have a reason to go there. And please, if you notice anything that is broken on the test site up, please tell us. Just send a mail to admin at opensource.org. Okay, thanks for the update. <laughs> Actually, it's open ID, so... Any more questions? Yes. Uh, one th question I had is um, how well is the download infrastructure and the services uh, scaled globally? Like in most of the infrastructure is in Nuremberg, some of it is in Provo. Um, mirroring happens around the world, but for instance, the central uh, mirror brain instance is, and I think the only mirror brain instance is located here. So the question is do we have probes like in regions like APAC that gives us reasonable ideas on how well the services can be used uh, in different regions of the world? Mirroring is something that is going to get much improved when we will have the Provo cluster ready. So whatever you said about the problems and stuff is something that we know already. The, so as for a brief introduction, how is it uh, how is it working? We have exactly like you said, the central mirror brain services and our sync open source here in Nuremberg. It's running in a sponsor actually, it's not running in SUSE. The mirroring happening is happening mainly from that machine. And the problem that we have right now is in the US mostly, not in uh, Europe. In Europe we are quite fine, but in the US we have quite some problem with the mirroring and it's going to get improved quite soon with the Provo cluster. Uh, what about APEC, like uh, Australia and Asia? They are quite fine. They don't have high load, and uh, we, they are quite fine there with the community mirrors that they have. So it's, there is no need there to set up our own mirroring services there. In the US, sorry, before you, in the US also we have quite some good mirroring, uh, community mirroring, let's say, but it's lacking the central mirror that you mentioned, which is going to be fixed soon. Just a curiosity, because obviously there's a lot of stuff going on here. How many how many actual servers are involved in the whole environment? Is it like dozens, hundreds, thousands? I mean, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> they are around. Uh, yeah, it's 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 not really easy to calculate because there are services there are servers that are running services. Yeah, pretty much twenty as we are pointing. But it's hard to calculate because there are servers that are running services, physical machines I mean, but there are also build workers. Do you count them or not? If you yeah, want to I'm count thinking, them, yeah, we have hundreds. Yeah, I'm thinking more of the core infrastructure. Once again? The core infrastructure, so like maybe a couple hundred? Around maybe 20, couple let's hundred. say. Let's say around 20 servers. Oh. Around okay. 20 physical machines, yes. Okay, great, thanks. 
So, no more questions. Thank you.